All right, everyone, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to how to build a trusting mentor mentee relationship. Uh, my name is Danielle Scheffler. I work at Booz Allen. I am a uh, deputy program manager in our uh, digital health sector. And I have been in the Drupal community since around 2008. Uh, I may know some of you, I used to actually organize the DC Drupal meetup, uh, been organizing uh, or did organize and have been uh, around uh, Capital Camp Gov Days, uh, Drupal GovCon for a long time. So really excited to uh, be back and, and excited to have you with me today. Uh, please feel free to uh, use the chat while uh, we're going on. I'd love for you all to uh, engage with each other and to go back and, and read what you have to say. Um, so really looking forward to um, having you take part in, in this presentation. Uh, so just a little bit more background is I've been a manager for about three years now, uh, off and on, uh, but also have been a mentor for about 10 years and really never had anybody uh, teach me that much about uh, how to be a mentor or why I needed a mentor. I just kind of fell into it. Uh, and given that there's so much mentorship, I feel like that happens within the Drupal community. Um, just really wanted to share that. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're new to the Drupal community, if you've been around for a while, uh, it doesn't matter if you're a developer, it's just something that uh, I think is very important and, and wanted to share with you all. Uh, so if we go uh, into uh, what we're going to talk about today. So we'll talk about the foundation. So what does it mean to be a mentor or mentee? If you want to become a mentor, how do you go about doing that? Uh, how do you find a mentor uh, if you want one? And then just understanding some things like what maybe makes a good quality or what are some good qualities of a mentor and just getting into a little bit more information there. Uh, understanding how to actually build and grow the relationship. So what kinds of topics could you discuss? Uh, how do you put into practice what you've actually gone to learn? And then we're going to do something that I call the extras. So for example, uh, what about the frequency of sessions? Uh, what are some of the resources? You know, how do you really get started and, and off the ground? Uh, and then I definitely want to uh, leave some room for questions as well. So uh, diving right in. Uh, so these are the dictionary definitions of a mentor and a mentee. Uh, so a mentor is somebody that is a trusted advisor, and we'll get into what that means uh, in more depth in a little bit, uh, but also a mentee. So that's somebody who's advised or who's trained, you know, somebody that gets counsel from a mentor. So some of this might be a little bit obvious, but one of the things that I wanted to point out is I feel like there are a lot of uh, preconceived notions about, you know, having a mentor or being a mentor. You know, you have to have, uh, or you are, you know, at the absolute top of your field, you've had tons of experience, you know, you're a certain age, uh, all of these different things. And, and notice that in the true definition, that isn't true. Uh, and we can go beyond the true definition, and I will say it is also not true. <laughs> Everybody has experience that they can offer. Uh, for example, um, you know, you could have two years of experience and you could still mentor somebody. Um, you know, there's always going to be somebody that's more junior than you. For example, there might be uh, someone that has a summer internship and wants to understand uh, what kinds of companies that you considered applying to or that you did apply to. How do they conduct some of their, you know, first interviews uh, for a job out of college, you know, or, or out of a, a training program, whatever it might be. So they might look to you. So just know that you do not have to, you know, be in a, you know, manager position or you don't have to have a certain year, uh, sorry, certain number of years of experience in order to, you know, fit that, that mentor definition. So why is having a mentor important? You know, obviously it's not like uh, you will not be able to make it through your career, right, without having a mentor. But why is it something that keeps getting getting talked about? So it's somebody that has a different point of view. Um, you know, and in all this, I, I do want to say, you know, I am a, a manager, like we're not like bad people, right? <laughs> it's not like you can't get this out of uh, a manager, but right, sometimes as a manager, you have to look at things, you know, in a certain view. Right, of course, you know, even if we skip to the second point, right, like I might be looking at somebody's career path, but they could be looking at wanting a promotion. I might need to uh, be looking at something, you know, with them in regards to a specific project, right? It might be a little bit more granular, whereas that would not be the case uh, with a mentor, unless if you as the mentee really want to focus on those points. Um, so we kind of look at that piece. Going back to a different point of view, 
I think most of us have experienced, right, that when we get uh, a lot of different viewpoints, we're able to really start to pick and choose what works for us. Then obviously doesn't mean, you know, your manager told you, okay, I, I really do need you to follow this path that you go, okay, well, my mentor said something else, so I'm going to do that. Obviously not what we mean, right? But the more points of view that you have from people that have expertise, the more you're going to learn about, you know, different approaches, uh, what works best with your personality, uh, how to handle, you know, maybe a different, difficult client situation. Um, let's say it's a coding problem, you know, something um, that's very specific. There might be different paths that you could choose. Uh, you might be able to learn more about different training opportunities. So there's a lot there that you can get from people um, based off of, you know, having all those different points of view. Um, that person might challenge you to push outside of your comfort zone. So again, like I said, manager most likely going to do that as well. But with a mentor situation, really there's a lot more uh, possibility in terms of all the career goals. You know, they might be able to help you in a completely different area than what you're focused on uh, for your, your job at that point in time. Um, and they're really something, somebody who's going to uh, push you. And that being said, um, they're also going to, you know, a good mentor is going to make sure that they balance that out. So they want to encourage you and they want to say, you know, try something new. I really think you can do this. You know, I want to empower you. But at the same time, I don't think that that's really the best way to go. Um, I think it's going to cause problems for you in your career. You know, if you brought a situation with a coworker, for instance, um, you know, I think that could ruffle some feathers. Um, you know, really just making sure that they're making you think about things, but not being afraid to tell you that really probably isn't going to work. Again, you might get that from your manager as well, but sometimes we have to think about that relationship. If you know that your manager might be the one who is, you know, talking to senior executives about your performance, you know, good, good things, right? It could be, um, or it might be areas of improvement. You know, it might just sound different to you based off of a manager saying it versus a mentor saying it. Manager, I'm sure, has the absolute best intentions, but at the same time, you know, sometimes people get, we use the word prickly, right? People get a little bit more prickly when their manager might say something that has a little bit more tough love than maybe somebody who they, you know, specifically chosen as, as their mentor. Um, they can provide encouragement when things get really rough. Uh, and then, you know, also means in situations where maybe you wouldn't want to talk to your manager or want to talk to a colleague, uh, for example, Honestly, maybe the, the issue is with your manager, right? And you're just not sure why they reacted to something a certain way, or, you know, you really feel like you aren't, um, you know, making headway with a colleague or a coworker. Um, you're not making headway with a client. You know, you don't necessarily want to talk to somebody who is involved in that. Um, you can go to your mentor and, and have somebody where you might feel like you have a little bit of a, of a freer space. Um, and then you might also learn skills you didn't realize that you had an interest in or even that were valuable, right? So we'll talk about how you go and, and find a good mentor for you. But at the same time, it might be in course of conversation with them that you go, oh, wow, I, I didn't even think about how that would be helpful for my career. Um, I just didn't think, you know, as a usability person that uh, I might need to uh, know about the specifics of something, you know, related to development, whatever it might be. So um, just really a, a few things to, to think about as you think about whether having a mentor is, is right for you or not. Um, and I did find this graph that I just thought was really great. And sorry, cannot talk today. Not graph, sorry, image <laughs> that, that I found. Um, just talking about all the different things that you can get out of mentoring. It doesn't mean that you'll get all of them during every single session. It doesn't mean that, you know, you'll necessarily uh, want to touch on all of them. Maybe in all honesty, you don't have a mentor to talk about training. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But there is a possibility to get all of these out of your training sessions or out of your mentoring sessions. So becoming a mentor. So we already touched on this a little bit. Um, but you don't have to be a manager, right, or be in a leadership position um, in order to have the knowledge that you need. So we already talked about that, but I'm probably going to say it a few more times <laughs> because I think it's super important um, to make sure that everybody feels empowered, that you can be a mentor, you have value, you have experience, you have information that is really important to other people and to be able to share it. Um, 
the other thing to think about is why do you want to be a mentor and and what will you get out of the experience so that isn't meant right in a in a selfish way but it can be rewarding it can also be you know how am i sharing this knowledge so for instance um in the past when i've done mentoring and sometimes it still happens i've done a lot of mentoring in accessibility i have over 10 years of accessibility experience and i found that I'm so happy also that there are sessions on uh, accessibility related um, to many different topics within within Drupal, but it's the fact that, you know, even though accessibility is really coming to the forefront, that we do still have, you know, a lot of people that aren't sure how to bake it into their process, you know, exactly how to do testing, and there's nothing wrong with that. But that's a place where I feel like I've found some great success in mentoring other people, and it makes me feel good to know that once I've you know, been mentoring somebody for a while, they can then take that back to their team, you know, to their organization, whoever they're helping, and be able to spread that accessibility knowledge. And what I get out of it is knowing that there are a lot more, you know, platforms, sites, you know, apps, whatever it might be, that are going to be accessible to everyone. And so that's my personal kind of value and, and my personal reason. You might have something different. And there's no uh, wrong answer, uh, I will say, except other than wanting to make your resume look better. Uh, that is not is not nearly a good way um, or reason to, to be a mentor. You want to make sure that it's really about helping other people and, and figuring out um, how you can share that knowledge and, and why you want to. Uh, the other piece is analyzing your areas of improvement and honing your skills. So none of us are perfect, thankfully. Um, but, you know, as you look at what you think it means to become a mentor you know you might do some more reading because obviously i cannot give you everything that you need to know in in a 45 minute session but figure out you know and do some self-reflection you know write some things down about what you feel like you could improve on uh, it might be that you have a fairly small uh, network of people not a bad thing but maybe you know you feel like in order to be a little bit more successful as a mentor uh, or to somebody right that might want somebody that has a bigger network so you need to start building some of those new relationships, which goes down to, you know, that the next piece is, in my mind, you can never know like too many people in a way, <laughs> because you really, as I've stated before, you learn a lot more, you get a lot of different viewpoints, right? Especially as we continue to grow in our careers, uh, we end up, you know, sort of instead of just gaining like one hard skill, you know, for the year, right? We really start to understand more about soft skills and, and building our toolkits and understanding what it means uh, for the nuances of communication, et cetera. And so it's really making sure that you can build those new relationships, not just for your mentee, but for yourself as well. Uh, and then in addition, if you want to become a mentor, think about people that you already know, um, or maybe it's somebody who you can get connected to because it's a friend of a friend, et cetera. And so just thinking about that network uh, and who you might be able to, to assist, even if it's a really small bit just for the start, at least it's, again, a start. So we'll go into finding a mentor. So it's a little bit opposite of what I said of becoming a mentor, but um, there are a little bit of, of differences as well. Um, but the first one is doing some self-reflection on what you want and what you need. So what's important to you personally or what's you know important to you professionally right sometimes um you know there's somebody that feels like their um you know sexual orientation right maybe they want a mentor that you know has uh some lived experiences excuse me in terms of um you know the, the same sexual orientation just in terms of feeling more comfortable with somebody um there might be somebody that um you feel has a lived experience in in another way um, you might have a specific skill that you, you know, want to uh, develop. So, for instance, for me, um, you know, I've worked on plenty of proposals and, and some business development, but I really want to understand more about how you even start that um, building the relationship to even get to the proposal stage, right? There's a lot that goes in um, before you end up actually getting to proposal writing. And so for me, it's really learning more about growing business and, and what that looks like. So. You know, and again, it doesn't just have to be one thing either. There's no rule that says, you know, you have to have this hard and fast, uh, you know, one thing that you're looking for. But again, you need to do that evaluation to figure out exactly, you know, what, um, what you want and, and what you need out of a mentor. 
Um, so make a list of, of who you know. Um, you know, it's obviously if, if you do already have a big network, I'm not like, go make your list of 100 people, right? <laughs> but just start to think of who you know, who might have some of the, the skills or the experiences or, you know, like I said, some of the background maybe that you're looking for. Um, and then to point number three, you know, asking friends, um, family, coworkers, managers, you know, it doesn't mean that they have to be your mentor, but you could say, you know, I'm looking for somebody that has skills A, B, C, D. Do you know anybody? You know, maybe they don't have all of them. Maybe they have one. Uh, and I can start with that person as a mentor. And then once I feel like I've succeeded there, you know, then maybe I find somebody else. And that's perfectly okay. Um, the other piece is don't be afraid to <laughs> meet with several different people. Um, you know, it, it's not like uh, you meet one person and you go, okay, that's my mentor. Now, you might have it. I mean, maybe, right, you, the first person that you meet is the person that, um, you know, you click with and, and it seems like it's good. Or maybe somebody suggested you to somebody and you think, okay, that they probably are like a really awesome person, but they're just not, you know, for me. That's just not what I'm looking for. So it's okay to kind of shop around, I should say, for your mentor, because this is somebody who you're going to, to trust and you're going to, you know, open up to that person. You're going to be talking about your goals, you know, maybe your dreams, whatever it is, you really need to feel like you have the right person. And so that then gets to the next point, which is trust your gut. Um, there might be somebody who you heard like five or six different recommendations from, and you maybe can't even put your, you know, can't put your finger on it. It just seems like it's not right. And that's okay. Trust your gut. Don't think because the person came recommended by you know, five or six different people, that means that you have to go and, you know, be with that, um, you know, be that person's mentee. That's, that's not true. Do what you feel is right and trust your gut. Um, so some qualities of a good mentor, and I will tell you, I, I actually laughed when I put this slide together. And the reason is, let's say I can't see, I'm sorry, the number of participants, but let's say we have like 15 to 20 people, right? If I asked everybody, and, and I probably would have done this, right, if, if we were live. And actually, even though we're not live, I'd love in the chat for you all to, you know, engage with each other and, and kind of answer this question of what you think some qualities of a good mentor are. And I say I laughed because we could all have different answers. I mean, everybody's list is going to be different. And in all honesty, I probably have more than 10. But knowing that no one is perfect and that everybody, you know, has different skills and, and qualities, et cetera, that's why I named this slide some qualities because there are always going to be, you know, more things that we want or, you know, even depending on um, the day or where you are in your career and, and what you want, um, those qualities that you are really looking for in somebody might change. But with that being said, uh, I will point out the reason why I chose all of these. Um, so trustworthy. So we talked about this a little bit, um, you know, in, in another slide or two. But really, the, the reason why I ended up bringing up trustworthy is because you are going to be telling somebody something that's really personal. And, you know, maybe your career goals, you haven't shared them with anyone. Um, maybe it's something about, you know, I talked about lived experiences, right? Maybe you share with someone something that happened to you in your past, maybe in your career, but also personally that has shaped who you are that you wouldn't normally tell a lot of people. And so you want somebody who's going to really keep that close to the chest and that you don't feel like they're going to, you know, go tell their friends or, you know, if they know your manager, they know people that you work with, that they're going to go, you know, tell them. Just really needing to be, you know, somebody who you can, who you can trust. You want somebody who can provide candid feedback. Uh, I always use the example of, of radical candor. And that's really where you care deeply about somebody. But at the same time, you're willing to be able to be very honest with them. You've fostered that kind of relationship where you can, you know, really give that constructive criticism that sometimes if it was given to somebody you didn't know, they'd be like, oh, wow, that was, that was kind of mean. Um, but really, it's because it's in your best interest and you've developed that relationship where you can be that honest. On the flip side, they have to be willing to receive that, you know, candid feedback to know that, you know, as a mentor, you are not perfect. And there are going to be times where you haven't hit the mark with the mentee or the mentee maybe tried something that you gave them and it fell flat and it did not work for them. And you have to, you know, kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out exactly, 
um, you know, what went wrong or, you know, was it the implementation of the suggestion? Uh, was it because it didn't work in the situation? You know, really just trying to figure that out, but being open to the fact that you're not always going to be right and that, you know, you might need to change something that you've done. Uh, somebody who's supportive. So that's supportive in, in goals. It's supportive in what the mentee, you know, wants out of the relationship. Of course, it does go both ways. You know, you need somebody, uh, again, that you connect with, but really just making sure that that support system is there. Um, of course, hopefully this is a given, but that doesn't mean blindly being supportive. Uh, if somebody, I'm just going to make up this example, you know, right now manages a contract that is worth five million dollars right and it might be fairly complex you know but it's a it's a budget that they can they can deal with uh and they come to you and say you know what my goal for uh six months from now is that i'm able to manage a program of a hundred million dollars that has uh you know 80 people on it and you know they've never done that before not even close <laughs> you know they've only um and i say only in quotes you know had a program that was you know 10 people Okay, so you're not going to be like, that sounds like a great idea. Yes, we will happen, and you know, that will happen in, in six months, right? That, that is the encouragement slash tough love. But on the flip side, of course, you could say, you know what, that's an amazing goal if that's what you want to do. So let's talk about how we can do that, you know, incrementally and get you there eventually. You know, of course, I'm not personally responsible for that, but I can at least help you based off of my experiences. Or if you've never, you know, had that experience, you can say, I've never had that experience, but I can, you know, have you go talk to my friend, you know, uh, Jonathan, and, and he can help you. And so that's really um, a way to uh, make sure that, that you're being supportive, but also, you know, being, being realistic too. Uh, you want somebody that's kind. Um, so again, <laughs> it kind of goes back to the example that I just gave. You know, you might hear that big jump of like, you know, the 5 million 10 person project to the, you know, 100 million 80 person project and think, what is going on? Like, how could this person ever think they could do this, right? You need to like reel that back in your mind and realize that big dreams sometimes are, are really good and help them out. You know, you don't want to be um, discouraging. You want to be kind and you want to be caring. Um, honesty, you know, we've, we've sort of gone into that already. Um, somebody obviously who's knowledgeable, um, you don't necessarily want to pick your, um, and I will say, you know, you could find somebody that's knowledgeable, but they might not be knowledgeable in the way that you want to grow. So for instance, for me, if I am looking at understanding relationship building uh, around proposals, I'm not gonna go have a mentor who's never worked on a proposal ever, right? So you need to make sure that the person who you are choosing as your mentor is somebody that's knowledgeable, you know, in the, in the subject that you, that you have. And again, as I said before, you know, the, the example I, I had just given is that, you might find somebody who has a lot of what you want, but maybe you're starting to look into something new or there's a, a small piece that your mentor doesn't know. And then they can say, you know, Jennifer knows this. So um, having somebody that can also connect you to people. Uh, somebody who's patient, right? There's gonna be a lot of ups and downs as you figure out what the relationship looks like. Um, again, you know, around the implementation of what you all have talked about, there's a lot there. So just making sure that you're all patient, you know, you can step back. If you feel like you're getting impatient with each other, you can say, you know what, I feel like we might just need to take a break and, and reschedule this session. You know, I wanna come back with a clear head, just making sure that uh, you have that available to you. Uh, somebody that's a good listener and then somebody who is uh, respectful. And so that's respectful, right? Not just in terms of your goals and, and what you want out of the relationship, but also of your time. Um, because obviously we are all busy, all busy. Um, and so what ends up happening is if you have somebody that says, yes, I, I want to be your mentor and this relationship is great, but you feel like you're rescheduling all the time because they don't have, you know, the time for you, then they're not being respectful to you. So I put in this uh, word cloud uh, that I found and, you know, I know word clouds are a little old school uh, for sure, but I thought that this was a really good example of what I had touched on when I got to the last slide is that this was a, uh, a word cloud based off of what uh, people in the uh, family medicine, uh, I guess, program at uh, UW had said they think of when you mention uh, mentor or good, good mentorship, right, and, and leadership. And so there are things in here, right, like nurturing, uh, somebody who's resourceful, right, so they can help connect you, 
uh, somebody who's effective. Um, I think there was uh, self yeah, self realization. Um, you know, somebody who has energy, right? So all of these different things can can come into play. Um, and I just think it's really important to remember that what you want might change. You know, again, as as I said, based off of what you're looking for in terms of your role, uh, based off of right today and how you're feeling. Um, you know, it might even change with the, with the same person, right? That you're uh, being mentored by. So just please don't think that the you know qualities that I gave in the last slide are like the be all end all. And when you go look for a mentor, like those are all the things that you have to find, right? This is very individual, just like any relationship, you know, between two people or a small group of people, um, find what works for you. Uh, but those are just some that I think really help form a, a good foundation for uh, a strong uh, mentor mentee relationship. So here's um, from the, the same uh, group. Uh, I promise I will not read all of this to you. <laughs> you can do that on your own time uh, when I share the slides. But something that I had wanted to share, right, is that it talks about role modeling, it talks about nurturing, you know, it talks about uh, ethical standards. You know, again, remember that this is, you know, related to a family medicine practice, but it really goes to show that having a mentor mentee relationship within, um, you know, the, the Drupal community or right within your, uh, digital organization or, or wherever you happen to work, that it can be used like these same definitions or, you know, these same type of relationships can span across many different industries, across many different roles. It's not something that is specific to what you're doing now. So if you decided in five years that you were going to leave the career that you're in and do something totally different, you could still apply everything that we're talking about um, in your in your new role. So just something to think about there, um, as well as the fact that, you know, if I was talking, for example, let's say about building business, right? Like for me, it's important that I have somebody, you know, within my organization or, or somebody that is similar, you know, in, in my organization, but there might be certain skills that you're looking for where it doesn't matter what type of uh, industry that person is in. And so you can cross those boundaries too. So I would just want to make sure that's very clear that you don't have to say, you know, I work at this place, it has to be somebody, you know, from this organization, or I work in Drupal, you know, it has to be somebody in the Drupal community. I mean, obviously, right, if you're a developer, and you want to learn more about like D9 development, like probably should be somebody right in the Drupal community, but it just depends on the skills, right, that you're that you're looking to grow. Um, so <laughs> I love to be positive, but I'm going to be honest, sometimes you have to think about what happens of like, what isn't, you know, working so well, and how do I kind of get myself out of this? Um, because you you want this to be positive, right? You you don't want to be in a relationship, right, of any kind that that's not working. So the first one is lack of consistency. So that can be in terms of touch points. Um, you know, if you've said I want to schedule something every month, and you know your mentee or the mentor is like, oh, you know, it's actually not working. Like let's do every three months, like. Okay, so that's probably not, you know, the best thing for you, right? The best, the best relationship for you. And so you need to think, okay, maybe this is not something that I should be a part of, you know, I should find another mentor, et cetera. Um, of course, you know, you wouldn't want to have a conversation with them, right? Going back to that uh, radical candor and, and candid feedback. But, you know, if they say, no, th this is how it has to be, uh, or they meet with you uh, once a month and then once every three months and then once a month and every, every two months, you know, you all understand this. Like you just need somebody who's consistent and that might go for like communication channels too. If it's like, okay, well, you know, sometimes I want to meet in person and you know, this time I, I want to meet on zoom and this time I want to, you know, do this and this, if you're okay with that and that works for your schedule, like I'm not going to tell you like, oh, well, that, that's a reason to get rid of a mentor. Right. But if, if that's something that doesn't work for you, then that that's, not good, right? It needs to work for both people and it really needs to be a, a two-way street. Um, so I had talked about this a little bit earlier. You don't want to feel like your mentor is in it for the recognition, right? You don't want a mentor that says, okay, well, I just want to look really good on my resume or, oh, if I'm a mentor, maybe I'll get a promotion or, hey, everybody's going to know that I'm a mentor. This is great and everybody's going to know me, right? Like that, that doesn't help anybody. So just making sure that, again, goes back to what I said before, you want to make sure that everybody is in this for the right reason. You want to make sure that you care about each other and that you trust each other. Um, it, sometimes people think this sounds so odd because they're like, I'm just looking for somebody for a business relationship. But 
you know, if you do have a true mentor that you think is really going to help you, or if you have a mentee that you really think, you know, has what it takes to, to meet their goals and is super passionate about what they, you know, want to do, or they have a great idea or, you know, whatever connected you right in the first place, you need to make sure that you're really respectful and caring and, and trusting of each other. And so if that rips apart, that can really destroy, you know, the, the relationship. Um, not challenging each other, right? It, it is so boring, like, this <laughs> is my opinion, but I think it is so boring if I am constantly talking to, say, the same person, and they're always like, yeah, I totally agree with that, or, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, like, okay, I, I, I don't think I'm that good, right, that I can be right all the time, <laughs> like, I, I just don't believe it, you know, I want somebody to, you know, come at me a little bit. And I want somebody to have a different opinion and, and to push me, right? That's how I grow. That's how I look at different, you know, uh, viewpoints, how I learn, right? And so if you don't have that and you always have each other, like agreeing with each other, neither person is going to grow and it really does not help. Doesn't mean obviously that you have to disagree with everything, you know, <laughs> but you do at least want some sort of, of challenge there to make sure that you're, you know, both learning something and, and figuring things out together. Um, from the mentor perspective, right, I think I had mentioned earlier the word empowerment. You want to make sure that, of course, you are giving your expertise to, excuse me, to your mentee, but you don't want to, like, give them all the answers. Like, if they come to you and say, I'm having this problem, I have this client, you know, I, I have no idea what to do, I'm so frustrated, I, I just, I don't know, right? That, let them vent, so like that's okay, but then start asking questions, right? Like, so, okay, I'm hearing you say this. So if that's the case, what exactly do you think, you know, they want? Like, if you were on the other side, why do you think you'd be frustrated with the situation? What do you think, you know, would make you feel better? And really just kind of guiding them and, and shaping that. Does it mean that you're going to, you know, give them all, you know, give them the solution or that you both are going to figure it out, but at least it helps them figure out, you know, how to work through situations um, and really helps them see the other side. And so they can start applying that, right, to different situations. And so it's really helping with that shaping. Um, and then the other piece, you know, again, it depends on the relationship, but if you are not really able to help the mentee connect um, what, or if you are the mentee, right, your mentor has been helping you do this, if you're not able to connect what you all are talking about with some of your day-to-day -day goals or your long-term goals or, or what have you, that can be really difficult too. It doesn't mean that the relationship is bad and it needs to end, you know, it just means that it's something to really, to really think through together. Um, and so these, again, not saying that this is all set in stone, but this is from me um, what I think makes a relationship difficult. And of course you need to be talking to each other when these uh, issues happen instead of just walking away. Of course, unless if there might be something egregious that happens. So building and growing the, the relationship. And I know I don't have too much time, so I will go through this. Um, but in terms of sample topics to discuss, and I will actually talk through a resource that is very specific and, and a guideline um, that you can use. But for the mentee, you might want to analyze a, a recent accomplishment. Yes, it, it will make you feel good, but why was it an accomplishment? Why exactly did what you, you know, did, how you acted, et cetera, work? You can figure out, was it that particular situation? Is it something, um, you know, where it was great and you should use it for other situations? You know, really thinking through that. Um, discussing your lessons learned on a project. So maybe something's um, not gone so well, right? Or maybe you're at the end, you know, what have you learned and, and figuring out, you know, how you can document it for the future. Um, role-playing scenarios. I always think these are super helpful um, because, right, sometimes we get into situations and we're like, oh, I don't know how that person's going to react if I say X, Y, Z. I don't know. You know, I'd love to figure out what I'll say if things go really well and what I'll say if things do not go so well. Um, so just being able to come up with some scenarios um, or working with your mentor, right, to come up with uh, some of those items. Um, walking through one example of leading by trust and uh, Basically, there is a book that I will, uh, or I have referenced in the uh, resources section called Trusted Advisor, um, right? And we said mentors are considered trusted advisors. Um, so it talks about leading by trust, right? Through transparency, through communication, 
you know, knowing yourself, uh, listening. So, and there are a lot of different examples in there. So just taking one of those and really kind of building on that um, soft skill and, and just starting to, to practice that. Um, and then if you have a goal, obviously this might not happen in, in one session, right? But talking about that goal and talking about it from the very beginning, you know, why you came up with that goal, what you think, you know, what that long-term plan might look like. So then on the mentor side, right, you can walk through a failure on a past project, you know, in your career, what you learned. You want to make sure that you're giving as much information right to your mentee as possible. That's also why I said there's a lot of trust in both of these because there's a lot of information that's being shared. Um, how did you become an expert in your field? Um, the most important lesson that you've ever learned, um, work-life balance, which we all struggle with. And your mentor might even say, I struggle with work-life balance. How do you handle work-life balance, right? Just kind of talking through those different things or like as I've gotten more work, you know, I've been able to handle my work-life balance by doing X. You know, it's not perfect, but here are some ideas. Um, and then there might be one on how career goals have changed over the course of their career, right? I had career goals five years ago even, um, and I think about them now and it's not like they weren't valid, but I've kind of gone in a little bit of a different direction and, and figured out more. And if we talked in another five years, I might have, different goals than I have now. That's the great thing, right? We're always growing and, and doing something. So putting it into practice. Um, so <laughs> I found this, and I think it's very true. It's how to eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. You might hear all these things from your mentor and be like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? This sounds like a lot. It's okay. Little by little by little, right? That's why we call it a mentor-mentee relationship, not a mentor-mentee one session. <laughs> so it's really just taking very small steps one at a time. Um, I've talked again about empowerment. Um, feel empowered to try something different, right? It's scary. It can be really scary because you are getting out of your comfort zone. But at the same time, really try to feel like you can, you know, do something different and that it's okay. So be empowered, you know, it, depending on what it is, you might want to tell your manager, your coworker, your clients, you know, whatever it is, give them a heads up, but be okay to try something new. Ask for help if you need it. Just because you've learned something new doesn't mean you're going to be able to take it and, you know, just run with it, right? You might say, you know, let's say to a colleague, you know, I've been working with my mentor on um, doing a better job of figuring out exactly how to present to executives. And um, I think I've got it, but um, would you be willing to, to take a look at my presentation or do, do you have any advice? Or you can go back to your mentor, right, and ask for advice. Um, so just ask for help. Um, I know that we don't always have a lot of time, but document what you've done, um, right? We know what works, what doesn't work, especially as, you know, maybe you're starting out in a skill, figure out what worked well uh, and why and what didn't and write it down and go back to it. Um, and the last is at first you don't succeed. Hopefully everybody said, try, try again. Um, you're gonna fail sometimes and failure isn't bad, right? Failure is how we grow, failure is how we learn. Um, I always used to say, uh, granted when I taught fitness, uh, is that uh, in some cases, if you fail, that means that you succeeded, right? Because you pushed yourself so hard into a certain level um, that in a way that was sort of your success because you tried something new. Um, and so don't be afraid to, to try that. Um, so in terms of the extras, because I also want to leave some time for questions, what else to consider? Uh, your frequency of meetings, I'm going to give the consultative answer. It depends uh, because you need to figure out, you know, what your goals are. You need to uh, figure out, you know, with your mentor or mentee, how often you want to meet. You know, maybe uh, once every two weeks is good to get started and then you go to, to once a month. Um, whatever you need, you can figure that out, but that's really important. Um, communication method, um, you know, again, decide uh, what you want to do there, um, especially now, right? It's probably going to be virtual. Uh, but once we get back potentially to a to our new normal, um, figure out what's what's going to work for you. Is it going to be going over coffee? Is it still going to be virtual? Is it going to be you know a walking meeting? Is it going to be something more formal? Totally up to you. Um, and then how to get the ball rolling, right? Do you want something that's more formal? Do you want something that's informal, where maybe you know as a mentee you send your mentor like one or two topics, and they come back and say, yeah, that sounds great. You know, I can prepare. Um, you know, do you want questionnaires every time? Totally up to you as to what you want to do, but those are some things to think about. Um, and so with that, I do have some resources. Um, I'll show you the PDF very quickly, just so you know what I'm looking at. Um, also put out, uh, or put in, sorry, Radical Candor, 
uh, the trusted advisor and then the handbook associated with it. And yes, I did put in some of my past GovCon uh, presentations because I did do one um, on radical candor uh, if you want something a little bit shorter than, than reading the book. And then the last one um, does take some of the principles from trusted advisor and is really about uh, leading by trust. Um, so very quickly, um, hopefully you can see this. Let me actually stop sharing really quickly too and then uh, share again because I want to make sure that you can uh, see what I have. Um, so just really quickly, um, this is a really good questionnaire. Granted, it comes from um, BU, so it might be uh, something where a little bit more, um, you know, uh, school oriented, but there are still a lot of good uh, resources here. So I recommend uh, that you check it out. Um, so I've been speaking now for like 40 minutes, so I'm going to stop. Um, Nika, do we have any uh, questions from, uh, from anybody listening? Um, more of dialogue uh, okay. between Taryn and I. And um, so Taryn said, mentoring is one of the things that has helped me grow um, the most as a professional. Um, having the wrong mentor can be very detrimental. Sometimes someone is great for some people, but not for you. Yeah. And it, she says, some of my best mentors have been people not in the same field. Has anyone else had this experience? Yeah, great. That's and then I'm, yeah. <laughs> and then I mentioned, um, I, I, sometimes I find it hard to find a mentor. You know, I guess early on, it's a lot easier when you're early and beginning in your career. But as you move up, I just find that it's a little more difficult to find a mentor. Because yeah. you find yourself being one more than being mentored. It's it's true, yeah. And, and I've definitely found that, um, you know, I've, I've sort of like accidentally found mentors, if that makes sense. Like you'll be in a conversation with somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that you had that expertise. Like that's fantastic. Maybe we should talk a little bit more. Um, and so, but yes, I, I hear you that. Yeah. Sometimes you end up taking on that mentor role and then you're like, well, wait a second. Like I, I want a mentor too, you know, because that is something to mention. Like you could be a CEO and you could still need a mentor, right? Like, so Absolutely. it is like something, right. That just stops. Um, right when you get to a, a certain point in your career, like, okay, you have 15 years of experience, you're done. Uh, it doesn't work like that. So, so yeah. 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 Um, all right. Does anybody have any questions maybe that they haven't uh, typed in? It's totally okay if, if you don't. I just want to make sure that everybody uh, has the opportunity to, to ask and, and to engage while we're here. Someone said, great job on the natural extemporaneous speech. Um, not, just reading, not just reading the notes. Is there somewhere we can download the slides? I will, I will be putting them uh, up on the uh, GovCon uh, on my session uh, right after this. So I will, I will put that up. And, and you're welcome. Yes, I, I know that you all know how to read. So I did not need to uh, read anything out to you. <laughs> okay, I have another question comment. My mentor was, is great. He literally mentored me into his job after he departed for another agency. And the great thing is that he continues to be someone who I can reach out to. Great discussion. Oh, great. All right. That is so fantastic to hear. All right, team. One really quick thing that I wanted to go back to, of course, I need to go back to Zoom um, and just share very quickly. Um, is I wanted to make sure again that um, if you want to contact me, and again, like I said, the slides will be up, um, but feel free to reach out to me at Scheffler underscore Danielle at ba.com. Uh, and I would love to be uh, engaged and, and to talk more. So um, please feel free to reach out. But thank you so much. I know that it's getting late in the day and, and really appreciate you being here. So uh, thank you all so much.